So, like I said before, as I record in this class is about uh, monetization, how to monetize your blog, part two. The part two. The part one was Google AdSense. And we did the uh, Google AdSense because uh, that is our major means of monetization. And remember that what I'm teaching you is what I do. All right. It may not be somebody's, another person's. Uh, it may not be another person's um, major means of monetization but it is my own major means of monetization all right so what i'll be teaching you is what i do straight to the point today we're going to discuss other means through which you can monetize your blog aside google adsense other means through which you can monetize your so number one is affiliate marketing. Affiliate marketing. Number one. Number two is PPC networks. PPC networks. PPC means pay per click. Pay per click networks. Pay per click networks, PPC, PPC, PPC networks, pay per click networks. Number three is sponsored guest posts. Sponsored guest posts. Sponsored guest posts. all right then 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 um number four and possibly the last is um direct product sales direct product sales or services direct product or services sales, direct products or services sales. All right, so we are going to be looking at uh, all these things, one after the other. We're going to be looking at them one after the other. So I am going to start with, um, affiliate marketing so i'll be sharing my screen with you now so that you can see what i'm doing all right so i'll go straight and share my screen so that you can see what i am seeing please if you can see my screen just wave all right that's great that's great so the first thing i want to state is that some of these options can be combined with google adsense some cannot be combined with google adsense remember i said earlier that our major means of monetization is through google adsense and that is the last class we had oh my god please just a second I'm supposed to send this link to this is not good A second, please. So, I said our major means of monetization is through Google AdSense. All right. And since Google AdSense is our major means of monetization, we must be careful to not go against their policies. So if there are networks that we want to get on, and those networks are not compatible with our major means of monetizing, then we don't gain, okay? Affiliate marketing. 
is compatible with AdSense, provided affiliate marketing is compatible with AdSense, provided that the product you're promoting is not um, something related to adult content like um, sexuality okay if you're promoting a product on how to enlarge penis you have an issue with google if you're promoting a product on how to make a vagina slippery and uh, wet you have an issue with google if you're promoting adult content adult content generally and when I say adult contents, those are things that talk so much about sexuality. But there is also a limitation. If you are promoting something about panties or bra, of course that could be exempted. But if it is something that goes straight to discuss so much about sexual organs, then you may have issues with Uncle G. Do you understand that? Please, if you understand that exception, just type 111 for me in the comment section. CJ, I saw your message, no problem. I will, <laughs> I will give you, sir. All right. So the summary of what I've said now about compatibility is that first and foremost, our primary means of monetization is through Google AdSense. And any other thing that is incompatible with Google AdSense, anything that conflicts with Google AdSense is null and void to the extent of its inconsistency. Does that make sense? So no matter what it is that you do, of course, I am teaching you what I do. You may decide to do something differently. You may decide to not use Google AdSense as your major means of monetization. It's up to you. But to me, in weighing the option of compatibility, anything that is inconsistent with Google AdSense is null and void to the extent of that inconsistency. So that also means that if I see a program or something I'm supposed to promote and make money, but the thing is inconsistent, is not compatible, is not acceptable to Google AdSense. I'll leave it alone so that you leave me alone because I cannot leave Google alone. So anything that will make me leave Google alone, I will leave that thing before Google will leave me. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? All right. So Affiliate marketing entails you promoting people's products and services for a fee, for a commission. That is what is affiliate marketing. Now, this is the reason why you have to choose a niche. If you are a blogger, you don't have to blog about football and health at the same time and news at the same time. That is a lot of bullshit. You're confusing your village people. You're confusing your ancestors, bringing your blessings. You are confusing the angel that is conveying your blessings. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Yes, Sonny, the love of Uncle G is, is, is ravishing. Such an amazing love. Hmm? He's, he's such a glorious love that a man will sit down in US, create a company that will be paying me in Nigeria even when he's no longer alive. Is that not amazing? Such a great love. Such a great love. I will not answer any question that right now. I will not answer any question right now until a class is done. You don't ask me questions when class is going on. You ask questions when class is done. And you ask questions related to the class we have done. If your question is not related to that class, you can private chat me and ask me or you can send it in the group. You know, in the course of this our training, most of you have become pro bloggers by way of research, okay? So even if you drop it in the group, there's a likelihood that somebody will even answer it before I pick it. So you limit your question to what we're discussing, but if it's beyond that, drop it in the group before I answer, somebody may respond. 
However, all questions come after class, not in the class or before class. All right, so affiliate marketing, like I said before, entails you promoting somebody's product or service for a commission. So let's assume that Emily has a company and that company is producing, um, is producing robots, for instance, or uh, is producing anything that is a physical product. And they need people to sell those things. What they will adopt, one of the methods of um, marketing that they will adopt is affiliate marketing. They will create an affiliate means. And so if you are able to bring people that will buy this product from us, we'll deliver the product. You're not the one delivering the product. We'll deliver everything. But if you're able to convince people and they buy this product using your link, on your website, we are going to pay, you say 10%, 5%, 20%. Some people pay as much as 50%. I've even seen 60% of the product, product price. Does that make sense? So that commission comes to you. And you can only make that commission when somebody buys that product or patronizes that service because you may be promoting either a product or a service. You're not limited to. Um, physical product, it could be a service. So let's say I have um, a service where I optimize people's blog, for instance, and I write a sales copy, and I put it up on my website, and I create an affiliate link and give to you, and you can advertise it on your blog. So when people come and patronize my service using that link, let's say it's 10,000, and your percentage is 30%, I'll send you 3,000 now. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? All right, so I will give you some of the websites. If you go to Google now and search affiliate marketing websites, affiliate marketing websites, you will see a lot of websites that you can do like this thing. But before we do that, the first and primary place I get affiliate promotions, if I want to do affiliate promotion, is mass bounty. Mass bounty, as in iPhone 8 Pro Mass iPhone 11 Pro Max, iPhone 20 Pro Max, iPhone 35 Pro Max. So, massbounty.com, massbounty.com, mousebounty.com. So, I think massbounty.com. Let me see if I can drop it in the chat area massbounty.com. So if you go to Mass Bounty, you create an account with Mass Bounty. All right? When you create an account with them, you go and search for the products. Oh my God. So you go and search for the product that you want to, product or service that you want to do affiliate, that you want to market. Remember, Remember, the essence of choosing a niche when you're starting a blog is to focus on one thing, okay? When you focus your energy in one thing, your, your chances of succeeding at it is really higher. When you scatter your attention and scatter your focus, it becomes increasingly difficult because you're chasing so many things at the same time. So the essence of choosing a niche is for you to have focus in the same vein, if you are doing affiliate promotion, you must make sure that you're promoting something in your niche. You can be blogging about uh, agriculture and you're promoting a product on, um, um, say, sports. It doesn't make sense. So if your blog is about agriculture, you may decide to promote something like a product that helps farmers to get better yield from their farm a product that helps farmers to weed their farm, a product that helps the, uh, farmers to make uh, processing their whatever they have easier, anything that brings value, anything that adds good value. Okay? So let's look at how do you choose a product to uh, promote. The number one, I'll tell you the things I consider before I promote any product. 
The number one thing I consider first and foremost is, is the product or service adding value? Is it adding value? Is it valuable? Because money follows value. Money follows value. All of you in this class who paid me money to be in this class and those who pay me thousands of dollars from outside the country to join my class, they do so because I have value that I will give them, which is what I've been giving you. If I don't have any value, they will not give me money. In fact, some of you who sent me money, there are people that have been begging you money since last month. You said you don't have money, but you still paid me money to join my class. Why? Because you have a perceived value you have attached to my name. Is a perceived aura of value that you think I can offer you and that you believe strongly that you're going to get for paying your money. So money follows value. So in the same vein, if I want to promote anything, I will ask myself, how valuable is this thing to that person that is going to buy it? Okay, to my target audience, how valuable is this thing to them? Is it a need or a want? Is it something dispensable or something indispensable? Okay, that is number one thing. So the number one thing is, uh, sorry, the second thing is, is the product I want to promote relevant to my audience? Is it relevant to my audience? I stay in Abuja, and sometimes I see people run adverts on Facebook and some other places. It becomes very annoying because I know they're wasting money. Why? Because I also run adverts, and because I'm a digital marketer, I know the strings I can pull, you know, to get results. And when I see people target me with certain products, I know that that person's targeting is wrong. Why? Because I don't have interest in that product. I am staying in Abuja, for instance. If you come to me with a property of five or ten billion naira to buy in my tama. I will like the property, but I don't have the purchasing power to buy it. Does that make sense? Okay, that is number one. Then the second part of right audience is that if I'm a pastor and a strong religious person and you're advertising to me how to enlarge my penis, it is insulting to my morality. So I am not your right audience. So if my, my website is about scholarships and study abroad, and all of a sudden, I'm promoting um, a product on uh, how to cook a goosey soup or the best wig you can wear. Well, of course, some people that are coming to our website will have interest, but it is not the right audience because those people are not there to learn about wig. They have something in mind before coming to your website because you have a niche and because you have something you, you focus on. All right, so you ask yourself that second question. Is this thing uh, something that is relevant to my audience? So the third thing I ask myself is the pricing of the product vis-a-vis -vis the value it is offering. The pricing of the product vis-a-vis -vis the, the um, value it is offering. So how do you do this? Very simple. If you see a polo on Mars Bounty, and the polo is uh, $500, why will you promote it? Of course, the, the, the owner of the product may offer 80% um, um, affiliate commission. But why would you promote it? Who would spend that kind of money to buy a polo? Apart from the very few rich people that can throw money around. But even those people who are rich, they want to get value for their money. So they can as well um, um, have other options. The price is ridiculous. So it will be very difficult for you to make sales. So the final thing I consider is the availability of the product or service. How, how rampant is it? How scarce is the product? How scarce is it? Is this something that every regular joke can just enter the next store and see? No, 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 no. So the product has to be unique. Even though it is solving a problem, even though it is good for my audience, 
even though the pricing is also good, but it has to be unique in the sense that you cannot go to Roban store in Abakaliki and buy it. In the sense that you cannot just walk into shop right in um, in um, Apo or somewhere around Abuja and pick it up. In the sense that you cannot just uh, it is not it is not your regular product. All right, it is something that is not very regular. Okay, I will give you an example. There was a time I created um, I created a website and I used it to promote um, a product. It was not purely affiliate marketing. It was more of digital marketing, but it relates to what we're saying. So I'm going to give you an example. Sometime in 2018, sometime in 2018, when I was in law school, when I was in law school, I saw a product on uh, 1688. 1688 is a website you can use to do importation. 1688.com or aliexpress.com or taobao.com or dhgate.com or jdmall.com. There are so many websites, Chinese websites that you can use to import things, all right? That is for digital marketing anyway, but it relates to this uniqueness that we're talking about here, affiliate marketing. So I saw that product. That product came out newly. It was something that it comes like a lantern, sort of. If you press, if you press the, the light, it will turn on. A blue light will turn on. It repels mosquito. It's a mosquito repellent. All right. Some of you may have seen the advert on Facebook. There was a time it was trending. But before it trended, I had already sold it and made money. Because if something is trending, it's already saturated. If you're a digital marketer, you will know that once anything is trending, it's already saturated. There's no way, there's no route there. Of course, they could be rude, but it depends on how much money you want to make. If 100,000, 200,000 is enough for you, yes, of course, you can go in. But if you're doing in millions of Naira, you know that there's no route there because the uniqueness and unavailability of the product has been taken away. The uniqueness and unavailability of the product have been taken away. So I saw that product. It was unique. It was not, um, it was very, very difficult to come by in the country because I went to Jumia and searched. I went to Kunga and searched, okay? Those were very scarce products. I imported them. How much did they cost? 1,650 1, Naira each. Do you know how much I sold it? Can you guess how much I sold it? I sold those products for 8,500 Naira. 8,500 Naira. Okay, so when you say 8,500 minus 1,650 Naira cost of, of purchasing minus 100 Naira, or say, let's say I'm spending 100 Naira to sell one product. So at the end, you will have at least um, 6,500 Naira profit from one of the products. And guess what? Guess what? I sold well over, I think I sold about, I sold almost 200 pieces of that product. Almost 200 pieces of that product. So let's say I sold around 180. So that is 1.1 million Naira profit. 1.1 million Naira profit. How was I able to do that? Very simple. The product was not everywhere. It was something adding value and I knew how to get the right audience. Once something is valuable, and you know how to get the right audience, and it's not everywhere, and the pricing is reasonable, people will pay money. They say there's no money in the economy. There's money, a lot of money. That is why there are always many, many, many billionaires in poor countries, because they sell small, small things to poor people in millions, in millions, and they make money. Go and study all of them. That is what they do. But this class is not about that. It's not about wealth and money making. So let's, let's look at mass bounty again. So mass bounty enables you to um, promote products. I am talking about mass bounty because that is where I've seen the highest affiliate commission, all right? Highest affiliate commission. 
You can also go to Google and search for other websites. There are so many websites that do affiliate uh, marketing. So affiliate websites. So if you check, you can do affiliates on Amazon. You can do on ClickBank. You can do on Shopify. I've never tried this uh, Rakuten, so I'm not going to talk about it. There's also Solid, even eBay. So these are places where you can do affiliate marketing. ClickBank is very popular. Almost everybody here should have heard about ClickBank. Mass Bounty offers me, me, I don't know about others, offers me the best affiliate commissions. All right? So the whole summary of affiliate marketing is that you get a product that is you register on or any of these platforms that you like when you create an account they will give you what is called affiliate link all right so if you want to market a product you will embed your affiliate link in that product on your website so when somebody clicks on that product and goes back to mass bounty and purchase that thing Mass Bounty will record that that person came through your link. That person came through your link. It's like referral link. For those of you who did Ponzi, when you refer somebody, you get a commission, right? How do they know? Because the person registered with your referral link, right? Okay. So you get your affiliate link from Mass Bounty or wherever you want to get it. Then you go to your website and promote the product or service. When people buy, Mass Bounty will send, it will be recording your, your income. So you can cash out whenever you want to cash out. If you reach their uh, minimum cash out, depending on the company you want to, to work with. Does affiliate marketing make sense? Oyibo, does it make sense? It makes sense, right? Okay, so let's look at PPC networks. PPC networks, that is pay per click networks. Pay per click networks. These are networks that pay you per click on their adverts placed on your websites. Websites, sorry, companies, advert companies that pay you money for every click generated on their ad from your own blog. These companies are alternatives to AdSense, alternatives to Google AdSense. They work exactly as Google AdSense. So when you register with them and they accept you into their program, you copy their code and place on your website. And advert will be displaying just like Google AdSense used to display. So whenever somebody visits your website and click and click on those ads, you make money. Does that make sense? The same way that if you have Google AdSense on your website, if somebody comes and clicks on it, you make money. All right? So let's look at the list of, of some of those companies. So you have MGID. MGID is spelled M-G-I-D, MGID. You have Propeller. Propeller. You have Ads Terra. Ads Terra, I think. You have um, um, these guys, Tabula. Tabula. Tabula is spelled T A B O O L L A. Tabula. So you also have um, Yahoo used to run adverts, right? I think I'll list more. If I, if I remember, I'm gonna list more. Now these are alternative um, alternatives. Mnet. 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 Yes. Okay, you also have 
media media.net media.net i think yes um and so many other ones these ones i've listed here are the ones that are verified like like we know that they pay we are well away that they pay and all these ones i've mentioned now some of them are very very easy apart from media.net and tabula apart from media.net and tabula you can apply for any of the other ones now and get approval within 24 hours sharp sharp if you apply for mgit you fire down if you apply for propeller you fire down if you apply for Astra, their own is even within a few hours, like five hours, you are approved. Sharp, sharp. Kia, kia. All right? So these are alternatives to Google AdSense. But I want you to know that they are alternatives because Google AdSense is better. They are alternatives simply because Google AdSense is better. So why is Google AdSense better? Google AdSense pays better money pays better money so if um, google adsense is paying you 80 naira for every click on your website um um some good maybe pay you like 30 naira or 20 naira or 10 naira per click but tabula tabula pays even more than google adsense tabula pays even more than Google AdSense, but it's very difficult to get in, very, very difficult, extremely difficult. There's a level of traffic you must have first before they will accept you. There's a level of traffic you will have first before they will accept you. So you, if you don't want to use Google AdSense, now you have the options. You can decide and say you want to use MGID or Propeller or Astra. Anyone you want to use is fine. But just know that Google AdSense pays uh, more money. Okay. Then what is next after PPC Network? What do you have on your list? You don't say something. I'll be looking at you people like that. So I want to believe that you have direct, um, okay, sponsored guest posts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Chidema, my person. Chidema, my personal person. Thank you very much. Lillian, all right. So sponsored guest posts. You know, this one is a way of monetizing your blog if your blog has grown. You know, they say, uh, Poverty is an orphan. Are you away? Once you're poor or upcoming, nobody wants to know you. It's when you blow now, people will start knowing you. So when your blog blows, eh, people will be coming to, to sponsor posts on your blog. Like they will write a post and come to you and say, please help us publish this article. Help us publish this article and link back to our own website because they want to get backlinks from you because they want people that visit your website to read their article. It could be that the article is selling something. It could be that the article is trying to get new clients. It could be that they're just looking for purely backlinks, nothing further. So sponsored guest posts are posts that people bring to you to publish on your platform and you charge them money. It is not for free. It is not for free. After my one year of blogging or so, some people were writing me from US that they want to, that they are offering a um, scholarship to students and they would want me to publish the scholarship on my platform. So many of them, I was just publishing, publishing. What is my own? Eh, they want to give scholarship. Oh, these people are good people. Oh, they want to give scholarship. I'll publish. Oh, oh, God bless you. God bless you. I just publish. Until one day I was discussing my friend, he said, oh, guy, you've been wasting money. He charges $500 to publish any guest post. If you don't like it, you can leave it. Do you know that by current exchange rate, $500 is about $200,000? Does that make sense? 
do you know that if you get five of such requests, just five in a month, that is one million naira, before AdSense will even come, before Google AdSense will come, before Google AdSense will come, you collect one million naira from sponsored posts. So it is a very viable way of you know, monetizing your system. But the problem is that you don't go about looking for sponsored posts. Sponsored post people come to you. So, but you have to properly position yourself to attract them and make it easier for you. How do you do that? You set up your contact us page because if they can't contact you, they cannot write you. Put your email address, all right? You set up your sponsored uh, post page, like how much you charge if people want to sponsor posts. There are many people that want to sponsor posts, but they may not know that you used to do sponsored posts. So you have to put it there and make it very explicit. And this is how much you charge. So when people ha um, are coming to you, you have it at the back of their mind. So you can collect your payments through PayPal. That is if you want to suffer yourself because PayPal can just wake up and ban your account. You can collect your payments peacefully through Payoneer. Payoneer. I write it. Payoneer. Payoneer.com. Payona. Payona.com. For those of you who don't know what is Payona, Payona is an international payment system that allows you to receive money in different currencies. As I am now, I have a pounds account, I have a euro account, I have a dollar account, and these are offshore accounts. So if you ask me now to send you my account in USA, I will send you my account with Citibank. I have an account with Citibank in USA. If, it's, if you ask me to send, send, you, uh, send you my account in UK, I have an account with Barclays Bank in UK. So whichever one that you want, if you want me to send you my account number in, in, in Germany, I'll send you an account that I have with a bank in Germany. So how am I able to do that? It is through Payoneer. When you create an account with Payoneer, they will open a bank account for you. Of course, you're going to... Uh, it's just like when you're creating your normal account, you're going to upload a lot of details, a lot of details, and a lot of stages, verification stages to know that you're who you said you are. And before you begin to receive funds, private funds from private people, you must have received from big companies. So some of you are going to be using Google AdSense. You can use, uh, if you're, <laughs> thank God, um, Samson, you're in this class. Samsung has a UK AdSense account that is in pounds. You are going to be using Payona to receive your payment from Google. Then from that Payona account, you wire it straight to your account here in Nigeria, okay? And Payona is regulated and is a very legit company. And what you're doing with them is legit business, so you don't have to raise an eyebrow about it, okay? So when you create an account with Payona, you can use it to receive payment from any part of the world in the currency that you want to do. Okay, so once you create an account with Payona, they will open bank accounts for you in banks in US, banks in uh, UK, banks in Germany, wherever you select that you want to have an account, they will open an account for you in that bank. So if there's anybody in US that wants to pay you, say yes, of course, you have an account in US. You send the person in your bank account in US, the person will send you money. Simple. Okay? This is I'm giving you a pro information, now. very pro information, but some of you are looking at me as if you don't understand what I'm saying. You can watch the video later to, to hear it again, but it's a pro information because there are so many people who are in Nigeria now that are limited, they don't know how to receive money. Even some of you now, you have friends who are outside the country or brothers or sisters who want to send you money You'll be struggling with uh, Western Union. Who has time for that? That long? Nobody has time for that. If you're if you're a pro, you will know that there are so many ways you can receive money very easily. So if you have people who want to sponsor guest posts and you're able to collect 500 from five people, that is over a million naira. Four people self is over a million naira. Four people is over a million naira. So when you want to do that, you can use Payona to receive your payment 
no matter the country. And Peona used to give um, um, ATM card, just the way your bank, GT Bank or Fidelity or UBA can give you ATM. Peona will send ATM all the way from US. They will send you ATM card, a MasterCard from US. You receive it here in Nigeria. For those of you who want to be traveling, because I, I like traveling, so and I don't like to be limited by currency. You can use Payona card. Wherever you go, any country you go, you can access money. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? It's glorious. Oh, you both, you that used to do traveling, if you, if you intend to leave Nigeria, if you intend to go anywhere, you can use Payona to withdraw money. Just any ATM that accepts, um, any ATM that accepts um, MasterCard, put it. You withdraw in the local currency, local currency. So if I travel to UK with my Payona card, I will withdraw money if I want to withdraw money. If I'm here in Nigeria, I will withdraw money. Does that make sense? All right. So that's that. If you want sponsored post, you will first of all grow because money follows value. It's only when you become valuable that people will come and give you money. So as you grow, you set up your contact us page, you set up your sponsored advert page so that people can contact you for sponsored um, sponsored posts. You charge them, collect your money, and publish the article. Everybody is happy at the end of the day. So I want to believe that the next thing is um, direct sponsored um, advert, right? Is it? Okay, so is it direct sponsored advert or direct? Um, yes, there's also direct sponsored advert, but it's the same thing with, it's almost the same thing with um, guest posts. Depending on your niche, sometimes people will call you on phone and say they want to place advert on your website. If you go to lindaikagesblog.com, you will see that 90% of the adverts on her homepage are direct adverts. You see that most of the adverts, most of the adverts on most of yes, most of the adverts on Linda's um, homepage, you will see UBA, you will see Access Bank, you will see Zenith Bank, you will see all the banks in Nigeria advertising there. Do you know? Do you know that each of those advert slots costs between seven hundred thousand to one million naira a month? Do you know that? Like banks pay her a million naira for a spot. Let me show you. Linda. Linda. I'm calling her in Chua Talago's voice. All right. So we're here. So if you look at my screen now, you will see one glow advert. Okay. Do you know that this spot costs up to 700,000 naira per month to place adverts? Like this small banner, this small banner, just this small banner from here to here, small, just glow. So if you look after that glow, you will see GT Bank advert. GT Bank advert. This small banner you are seeing now will cost them up to 700 or 800,000 to have this spot for one month. If you go down, you see Techno. Techno. If you go down, you see Pendy. You, if you go down, this one is a personal uh, TV show advert. If you go down, you see another advert getting married. These people are selling chair, foreign chairs. These are direct, direct adverts direct advert and not just here as you're going to go on our website you will see lots and lots of direct adverts okay now if you go down if you look at look at this place now you see advertise with us advertise with us at the down at the footer of this website see advertise with us all right so if you want to advertise with them you contact them through this email address then like KG at, at gmail.com or you can call her on phone these are the phone numbers her office phone numbers 
you can contact them. I'm telling you how much they run the ad because I've contacted them before. Okay. But that was in 2018. By now, it should be over 1 million naira. You can't place that back there now for 700,000. You over a million naira because naira don't jack Naira is no longer anything now. So her money must have grown. By now. So as you grow, people will come for sponsored posts. People will come for direct advertisements. And it goes on and on and on. Now, let me even shock you. Do you know that some bloggers don't accept direct advertisement? Do you know? Because some of the places that people may want to take on your website may be the places earning you big money. For instance, somebody sent me a mail sometime last month that he wants to place a direct advert on my website, on the header of my website. How much does he want to pay? He wants to pay $1,000, which is about 400 and something thousand, Abi. But if I do that, that spot will earn that, that more than 1,000. That spot alone will earn me more than $1,000 $1, in a month. So I told him to take on that spot. He said, no. I said, no, I'm not doing. Do you understand? Because I know, because I know that that spot will earn me money. So as you do direct advert placement, understand that the spots you're placing advert, people's adverts, we go a long way in determining the price. Okay, if you go a long way in determining the price, if it's a place that used to get a lot of clicks, you also put that into consideration. So what is next? The next one is direct, um, I think I saw it, let me check. Linda, get off my face. Linda, get off my face, sister. All right. Yes, welcome, um, Linda. Oh, Linda. <laughs> there is Linda in our midst. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. So the, the next and last one is direct products and service sales. Now, you can create services or products in your niche by yourself and market it. You can create products in that your niche and market it. I'll give you an example. I have a book. I have a book called um, 16 Secrets on How to Win Multiple Scholarships in Nigeria, 16 secrets on how to win multiple scholarships in Nigeria. I wrote it in 2017, but I have renamed it now. The name now is the Nigerian Scholarship Bible. The Nigerian Scholarship Bible, that is the name. How much do I sell it? It's 2,000 Naira, only 2,000, and it's selling on my website. What does it do? It teaches students how to win scholarships, multiple scholarships in Nigeria. That is from my own experience, because when I was in school, I won multiple scholarships when I was in school. I was in about uh, five scholarships when I was in school. I was earning 650,000 Naira. From my 300 level, I was earning 650,000 yearly. Some people here, some people here who were my classmates were away that time. Some of them knew some of the scholarships that I, I was on that time. All right, so I compiled my experience in school. I compiled all the things I learned while apl applying for scholarships because when I started applying in year one, I did 14 applications and I did not succeed in even one. So I gathered enough experience, more than enough. In fact, before I left school, I had, I had so many people that were on scholarship cut of my efforts. Uh -huh. Even Chedema, Chedema Igwenyi, won Chevron um, scholarship. Okay? And I was the one that did the application, took them to exam center, and they wrote the exam. So I compiled those experiences and transformed it into a book. I also compiled a list of scholarships the eligibility, the period used to come out, how you can apply, 
and a lot of other things. I put it in that book and named it Secret, uh, 16 Secrets on How to Win Multiple Scholarships in Nigeria. Guess what? Guess what? Do you know how many copies that book? <laughs> Do you know how many copies that book has sold? It has sold hundreds of copies. Hundreds of copies. I may just be sleeping like this. If I wake up, I'll get a lot of 2,000. Somebody came to my website and he likes the book. You pay for it. I'll send it to his mail. And the good thing is I don't have to reprint it. I'm not printing anything. Just copy it in the mail and forward, forward, forward. Even if you people are one million, I'll just forward to your email addresses. That is that. There is no cost of reprinting, no nothing. That is digital product. So in your own niche, you may have a product. It doesn't need to be a book. Right now, I am writing a book, another book. Um, another book on international scholarships. I've discovered that most African students do not uh, know how to go about searching for scholarships. They don't even know where to apply, how to apply or how to get started. Those, especially those who want to study abroad. So I am writing a book on how to study abroad. And I'm inviting lots of friends, my personal friends, who are outside the country through scholarships and those who have done big things outside the, the, the international space through scholarships to bring their experience to bear. So I am compiling all of that into a book now, you know, that will grant you access to the international education arena. You don't have to break the bank to go to school. There are people that are going to school for free. I went to school for free and I was paid while going to school. I was giving money to go to school. So you too can do the same. My parents did not pay any money, no money, school fees, house rent, scholarship. So you can actually go to school for free. So I'm writing a book on how you can do that on international space. And when it comes out, it's going to be for free because I'm using it for campaign, for, for my marketing. I'm trying to grow, scale up one of my websites. So I'm going to use it for marketing. So people, will, it will be an offer. I'm offering to people, people will come, get it, go and read. And succeed, inshallah. But at least they will come as traffic, first and foremost. Okay? So, in your own niche, you can create a product, you can create a service. If there's anything you know how to do, or if there's anything you can offer that is valuable, and you think your audience are going to buy into it, go ahead. Create it, put it on your website. Google is not against it. You are going to make money from that. You are going to make money doing that. And all the monies you make will come to you. You will not share it with Google. You will not share it with anybody. It will be entirely your money. Entirely your money. All right? So I think, um, I think uh, that is that for direct product creation. Okay. Okay. And again, it doesn't need to be your product. You don't need to know this thing. No. <laughs> you don't need to know it. So don't go and hurt your brain. You don't have to know it. For instance, I have a website on uh, general news. It's like a forum. It's like a forum. All right. So I saw a software, a WhatsApp marketing software that can enable you send bulk messages on WhatsApp. So I bought the software from somebody. I used it and he sent bulk messages. This was in 2000 and then just after our call to buy, I think after our call to buy, yes, that was around December 2018. Okay, so I sold the software from December 2018 to around April 2019 before I stopped selling it because it started malfunctioning. So I designed an advert banner for it and placed on the home page of my forum my forum okay so people that were coming visiting my forum we now see it do you know i sold well over well over i think about about i sold about 89 copies of that software i think i sold i sold over 80 copies of that software and I think the price was, uh, the, the price, the promo price was just 5,000, I think so. 5,000 times 89. That is 445,000. 
Okay, that, that is about four hundred forty-five thousand. How how was I able to do that? I will just place it on my website. I will run adverts. That that page that it is on my website will become the landing page. So it doesn't need to be my product if it is working and I have the right to resell. Because when I got the software, I told the guy that I want to resell this. So he gave me the right to resell it. Do you understand? I'm not saying you should go and carry somebody's product and be selling them. You could be sued. And when you're sued, you can consult me. I'm a lawyer. I will say, cheers, bro. You bring your money. We'll go and, go and talk. So if you have the rights to resell the product, you can write about that product. Write about the solution. Not to go and write about uh, the product is white, it is fine, it is beautiful. No, 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 no. Write about the solution it is going to bring to people. Okay? Discover what the pain point of those people, your target audience. What do they want to achieve? What can this software help them achieve? How can this software make their life better, easier, much more comfortable, and help them to execute a lot of things in a single click. So write on those solutions, package it in a sales letter, then go and advertise. Where did I advertise? Very simple, advertise on, on, on Maryland. On Maryland, just create a banner, use 20,000. I will run advert with 20,000 and make like uh, 150,000. I don't know if you get the point. Sometimes I run advert with uh, 20,000 and I make 100K. That is 80,000 Naira profit, right? Even my scholarship book, what I do is I want, if I want to sell 20 copies of that book this, this week, if I want 20 copies of that book to be sold this week, I will go to Facebook, create advert with it, and link it back to my website as the landing page, all right? That place where I'm selling the book. I'm going to target people who are in Nigeria. I will target ages between 17 to 23 years. So if you are not 17 to 23, you will not see my advert. Then I will go deep down into my audience to select people who are in school. So that time you're registering on Facebook and they're asking you date of birth, school you went to, uh, where you work. It's not because they like you, no. It's because they will give it to us, the advertisers, to use it and target you. That is why when you see some advert, you'll be like, oh, this is so nice. It is nice because the person who is advertising has targeted you and you know that you have interest. So I will go and select schools. I will select EPSU, Unizik, um, Awolowo University, Ilife. I will select a lot of schools, like up to 10 schools. So if you are not in Nigeria, you will not see my advert. If you are in Nigeria, but you are not within the ages of 17 to 23, you will not see my advert. If you are in Nigeria, you are within that age bracket, but you are not in school, in that school, in any of those schools I mentioned, you will not see my advert. So it means that those who are going to see my advert are likely people that need it. So my audience is correct. So people will come, they will read. My sales letter will convince them. They will simply transfer ordinary 2,000 uh, naira to my account. Okay? And I will send it to them. Does that make sense? So in doing product marketing, in direct marketing, it doesn't necessarily need to be something you have created yourself. It could be something that somebody has created, but you have the right to resell it. You can also pay somebody to create a product for you. There are people that do product creation. That's all they do. That's all they do. In fact, the, the book I'm writing now on international scholarship, I'm considering outsourcing it to somebody. Somebody that's even in this group self. Sam Sinabani, he does ghost writing. So I can hire a ghost writer and say, write this thing for me. He write it, I'll put my name on it. It doesn't matter, does it? I will go through it and be sure that it is quality and it meets up the standard I will do if I'm the one doing it. Most of these rich people that you see in marketing books, they're not the one that wrote the books. So. Like Obas and Joe, like so many people. You see them marketing that this is their book they've written. They're not the writers. Oh, hire a ghostwriter. That's all right. You put plaster your name on it as long as it's quality, as long as it represents your opinion. Okay? Then you market the shit out of it and make money. Does that make sense? So that is that about um, alternatives to AdSense. That is how to monetize your blog. Part two. All right, so if you have questions from this class or from any class at all that we have had, please shoot. I'm in such a wonderful mood tonight. I will answer. 
Somebody asked, please, can you register with more than one AdSense company? AdSense is one now. Unless we're talking about alternatives to AdSense. AdSense is a program owned by Google. It is to partner with people to run advertisements. Simple. So you can't have two AdSense, uh, two AdSense companies. AdSense is one. So I think what you are trying to ask is, can you register on more than one PPC network? That is pay-per-click companies. All right? Yes, some are compatible with AdSense. Some are not. For instance, now, you can use AdSense, I think, and you can also use Astra at the same time. Or you can use, I've seen somebody using AdSense and Propeller. But if you are asking my personal opinion, I will say you should not try it. Why? Because I don't want to be a Google and enter Express. Simple. If I have AdSense or if I have Google AdSense on my website, I don't want another. Hold it. I don't want, I don't want problem. Anything that will make me fight with Google, I don't want it. Whether it's against their policy or not, I don't want another PPC network. I can promote, I can do affiliate promotion because Google is not against them. As long as it's not adult and all this uh, terrible content. So I can promote those things. I can do direct um, advert on my website, like the software I talked about, like the book I talked about. So I can do those things. But anything PPC, you cannot see any other PPC advert on my, my website. All my website, you can't see any other company advertising there. But if it's direct advertisement, let's say a company comes to me and say, we want to advertise directly, and they are not PPC company, of course I will place the banner, because Google is not against that. So anything that will put me, pinch, pitch me against Google, no, 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 no. They are too sweet for fights. I don't want to. So if you're asking about whether you can, yes, you can. But if you're asking whether you should, you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You can know, but you shouldn't. There are two different things. All right. So, how to apply for Google AdSense? Very simple now. I've I've said it before in my previous class. Maybe you did not watch the video. Create a Gmail account. Create a Gmail account. Once you create that Gmail account, log into the Gmail account open a new tab on the same browser you are logged into the gmail account open a new tab type google adsense you will see the link to apply very simple just click on get started simple then they will be asking you your name your website name and um, your website name um, a lot of other details just fill the form until you get to the end they will give you a code that you go and paste in your website you contact, if you don't know where to paste the code, usually in the header, you don't know how to do it, you can contact the person who designed your website. You put the code in your website. That code is what Google will use to verify you're the owner of the website. And they will use the same code to come and crawl your website and know whether the content you have on your website is qualified to get you into the AdSense program. All right? So how, the question is asking, how do we influence our CPU? Well, I don't know what is CPU. CPU is a computer component, I think. So I don't know what is CPU. I don't. So if you meant how to um, influence CPC, CPC is cost per click. Cost per click. Of course, I've taught that, I think, in our second class. So go and watch the video. You understand it. If you don't, then you tell me specifically what you don't understand. Then we can trash, we can trash that. Okay, enlighten us on the rules and rules and regulations of what? Of what? <laughs> there are so many rules here. So tell me the rules you want to learn, then we can look at it. If you're talking about the rules of AdSense, remember that AdSense can ban your account. If you go against their policy, they, they will ban your account. Okay. So I'm going to get a link to their policy. Go and read it. Sit down, sit down and read. Sit down and read it. Don't say Remedy did not tell you this one or Remedy told you the other one. Sit down and hear from the horse's mouth. But 
Let me check something. Absence policy. AdSense policy. Okay. I think. Um, all right. So this is the link. I will send the link to the to their policy. Policies. That's that for their policies. So you can read it. Take time and read it one by one. You're not going, you're not about to go to heaven or hell. So take time, read it one after the other. Read it too, so that you will know. But on a general note, just know that there are a lot of things, AdSense, France at one. Clicking on your advert is the shortest way to AdSense ban. Did you hear me? If you click on your own advert, that is the shortest way to get him banned. The fastest way, fastest way to get him banned. If you think Google doesn't know that you're the one clicking, then you're deceiving yourself because your IP is the same thing. Your IP address is the same thing. If one IP, and it doesn't need to be your IP, even if you collect somebody's phone or you ask somebody's phone, uh, somebody to use his phone and go and click, well, if one particular IP is clicking on advert repeatedly, Today you come and click. Tomorrow you come and click. Next morning you come and click. And it's just you people, just the two of you. I'd rather you're doing yourself. <laughs> you are doing yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you will make money, or you'll see your money growing, growing. Five dollars, ten dollars. Following money, if you wake up, you will get a very terrible message from Google. You have violated policy. And your account has been disabled. And you, there's nothing you can do about it. You cannot do shit. You can't do shit, man. You can't do shit. So there's nothing, absolutely nothing, that you can do about it. So please don't click on your advert. Don't click on your advert. For any reason, don't click on your advert. If you mistakenly click on it, it's not an issue because mistake is not something you do now and do it again and do it again again and again that is not a mistake it's an intentional mistake and intentional mistakes are punishable <laughs> but if you mistakenly click on your ad but of course it's not it's not a big deal because you just did it once maybe once in a while you mistakenly click on your ad but while you are trying to click on something okay they will forgive you for doing that but if you go on and on and on and on you are in hot soup and nobody will save you. Then the second thing is don't publish adult contents, writing about sex, writing about vagina, penis, you know, adult content, porn, naked people, naked photos, erotic videos, erotic pictures. Don't do that. They may not ban your access account straight if you do, but they will limit ad from serving. Ad will not show on your website. Your, your account will be live, for, but ad will not be showing. All right. Then there are so many other things. Just read the policy, you understand everything. Okay, so Joshua said he meant CPC. Yes, like I said before, you, you can reasonably inflate your CPC. I said some of the means through which you can do that is by first of all blocking categories that are not earning you good money categories that are not earning you good money so how do you block categories that are not earning you money Hi, right. this thing warrants me logging out of my email address you think you simply log into your your google account you go under blocking controls blocking controls all right when you get to that place, you will see general categories. So if you log into blocking controls, you are going to see general categories, general categories. And you also see sensitive categories, sensitive categories and general categories. So when you view either of them, you will see 
a start dashboard that will show you the number of views each of those categories receiving on your website and the percentage of earning that is the most important the percentage of earning the percentage of earning so if a particular a particular category is having very high percentage of views but low percentage of earnings you don't need it it is common sense right why is this so because there are people that when they want to advertise on google they will set their advert cpc to 0 0.04 so that means that no matter what you do you can earn above 0 0.04 from them so most of them are are used to hiding under certain categories you just go and block them just go and block them so that will reduce all those useless adverts from seeing on your website and therefore allow those ones with high cpc to show that is common sense right that is common sense so the next way to improve your cpc is to get traffic from what we call tier one countries tier one countries tier one countries if your traffic is from us you could be making a lot of money because google values a click from us if your traffic is from nigeria you'll be making money too but not as much as somebody who is uh, from us do you understand i will give you an example there was a time i had um, two websites making money one was receiving traffic from us the other one was receiving traffic from nigeria so they were receiving traffic from us no they were receiving traffic from nigeria used to have like 180,000 page views per day not per week oh, per day 180,000 page views almost 200,000 page views per day do you know how much i used to make i was making like 200 to 250 dollars per day 200 to 250 dollars per day meanwhile the other websites that used to receive traffic from us used to have less than 15000 page views per day yet i'll be making 300 to 400 dollars i don't know if you understand so my website giving me 180000 page views in nigeria was making less than a site giving me 15000 page views from us i don't know if you get the point so but this when you're starting out don't go and uh and you show that somewhere that it must be us or nothing no if you go there you will get frustrated it is not easy to get even to even 100 page views from us it's tough very very tough so your traffic could be coming from um us it could be from uk it could be from australia it could be from canada germany all those european countries they have good cpc good cpc do you understand if one person from us clicks on your advert and the keyword he used to land on your website has one dollar or 1.2 dollars cpc or even 1.5 dollars eh? cpc and somebody from obomosho somebody from Obomosho in nigeria or from uh, somewhere in cross river or somewhere in edo or somewhere in um, which other state linda where are you from somewhere from imo not from ebonyo if somebody from any of these places click on your advert you will likely earn five cents Sometimes even if the person is from it, though you earn one cent. <laughs> the person is from a bomb, so you earn two cents. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm joking, no. I'm just joking. All right. So the point I'm trying to make is just that um the point I'm trying to make is that if people, if majority of your audience is from Nigeria. When they click you earn lesser than the audience from us so it means that if your cpc from us is good enough you may need like 50 persons in nigeria to visit your website before you make something that one person from us will give you so that is the point but the the issue is that to get people from us to visit 
is difficult. It's difficult, all right? And how do you solve that difficulty? Go back to the second lecture we had, either second or third lecture. That place I talked about keyword research. Keyword research. It is everything. It is everything. It is everything. Go and focus on those small, small keywords. Press it. Press it. Press it. Because yeah, those small, small keywords that you're seeing that have 50, 100 searches, 200 searches, big guys are not looking at it. Go and focus on those small, small ones. Do you know that 20, 20 um, keywords with 200 searches that you have is already 4,000 page views? Are you aware? Do you know that these 4,000 page views now can comfortably, let's say you have uh, uh, 20% click through, or even use 15% click through. Let's not go far. Let's say you have 15% click through, and your CPC, your CPC is just about say 0 0.20. Do you know that thing now can give you 100 to 120 dollars? 100 to 120 dollars. Let's even say it is giving you half of it. Let's say it is giving you, say, $80 or even $70, $70 per day times 30 is 2100 2100 times current exchange rate. The last time I sold dollars, I think two days ago, I sold at 452 452 uh, Naira to $1. So you will see that this $2,100 is 949200 Naira. Does that make sense? Just you need just about uh, 50, 50, naira, fifty thousand naira, fifty thousand eight hundred, approximately fifty one thousand, to be making a million naira monthly. So go and focus on those small small key. I cannot emphasize this enough. I can't say it enough. This is the this is the four room. This ah, this is the height of this thing. This is the climax. This is the Apple G. This is the Zenith, the cruise of every discussion. Focus on those. Squeeze life out of it. Squeeze, focus, gather them, gather them, squeeze them, make money. If you go and most of those bloggers you see that are frustrated, don't know this thing I'm telling you. They are there struggling with uh, uh, big authority websites. Okay? So please don't be like them. I want you to succeed. I want you to make money. Okay? Because you don't make money. I will unfriend you. And you should unfriend yourself too. Unfriend yourself. You don't make money. Unfriend yourself. All right. So what is the next uh, question? How do you position? Okay. Before that, I think there's another one before that. What if I click on my own link using another person's phone? My brother, if you click on your own advert using another person's phone, how many people's uh, phone will you collect to do it in a day? So your life, you go, just go about looking for phone. Please give me phone. Please give me phone. Oh, I want to click. I want to click. That is frustrating. <laughs> of course. That, that, that is, uh, ah, my brother, even those are using their phone will be like, yeah. In the show, number one Yahoo killing me. Are you sure it's not Yahoo that you're doing? So you're looking for phone, 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 phone. So, and for me, I hate the idea of Yahoo. Some of those people that are doing it, you can make more money than them. Some of them, some of them you see, just pick $5,000 and they will be happy. That $5,000 could be somebody's life savings in the US. You go and scam the person. The person will die of commit suicide and die. You are a murderer. You are a murderer. And no matter how you look at it, you are. Committed mother, either directly or indirectly. So if you have something that you're doing online that is legal and legit, some of them pay more money than that. If I have two websites giving me ten ten thousand dollars in a month, that is twenty thousand dollars. Okay, that is how much will it be in Naira? Let us look at it. Twenty thousand times four fifty two, nine million Naira every month. How many Yahoo boys collect nine million Naira per month? 
how many? And without going, doing katakata, without having rest of, I, I sleep comfortably, comfortably. And wake up whenever I decide to wake up. If I'm driving to anywhere, I drive with my shoulders high, head high. You call me a here. I don't have anything in my cupboard whatsoever. So my man, how many phones will you collect to, let's say Google is paying you 50 naira, 50 naira per click. One now, you collect everybody's phone in your village. It will not make even one time. <laughs> so please, fashion the idea, fashion the idea. You know what? Get traffic, get traffic. Traffic is money, money is traffic. Please, what, what can you explain about premium AdSense? Like I said before, it is within my rights to say it or not say it. So when I'm comfortable about saying it, I'll let you know. It is a premium information that people pay up to 500,000 or even more to get. So calm down. No? Don't, don't rush the ancestors. Calm down. The ancestors will be satisfied. They will take bond offering and be satisfied first before they go into that. But if you are starting out, you don't need premium. Why do you need premium, premium answers? Why? This person that asked, I'm watching also, do you have a blog, sir? Is it on music? Is it on controversial things that get banned every day? I understand why um, Cindy Cruz asked that question uh, before. She did because she's in music uh, niche. And some of them get banned like, of course, I understand why they get banned. Because the places they go and place advert are places that people are clicking. So Google wants to get genuine clicks, not um, facilitated clicks, not um, clicks, boju boju clicks. No, 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 no. Not clicks made by mistake. And that is why they pay more money for people who are clicking from US than from Nigeria. Because for somebody to click on your advert from US, the person has the intent of buying or patronizing that service, or at least seeing more of that service. But here in Nigeria, you'll be scrolling on Facebook, you will see somebody's advert that is selling uh, shoes that is fine. You'll be like, oh, this shoe is fine. You like it. Why are you liking it? Why are you liking it? Don't you know that that like you have done now has removed like 10 naira from somebody's account, the person who's advertising. You go and comment how much, even though you know you're not buying it, how much? It has removed 15 naira from his account. And you're still commenting how much. You don't even know that you're removing money from him. So because they know that it is prevalent and, and pervasive ignorance in that regard, they turn it down, turn it down, turn it down, turn it down. So you that is starting out, you don't need premium ad sensor. You don't. If you do, I will know. And if if by the time you need premium ad sensor, I, I should have been hearing your name by that time. You should be a big name. You don't need premium AdSense. Most of my sites are on ordinary AdSense. Just, I have just two websites that are on premium AdSense. Only two, only two, only two. And those two are not known even to people who are here. Okay? So what is, how do you position your websites to receive more traffic from the one country? Well, it is very simple. Use keyword research. What are people in Australia searching for about your niche? Let's say your niche is about health. What is the health condition in, in Australia? What are they searching for? Okay, look at the things they're searching for. AHF will give it to you. Sure you know that in AHFs you can change the country. The default country is US. But if you want to search, you can change it to Australia. You can change it to Nigeria to know what people are searching for this thing in Nigeria. So, if you're running keyword research using AHF, you change that country to your target country. You change it to your target country so that when you're running that research, you are going to get what people are already searching for. Blogging is business and you treat it as business. You don't go about writing content and hoping that people will search for it next year. No, 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 no. You write on what people are already searching for. So if I'm in health niche and I want to target people in Canada, I will choose a I'll go to Google, type top 10 health blogs in Canada. Top 10 health blogs in Canada. This thing I'm giving you now is an insider secret. Insider secret, like insider secret. You go to Google, top 10 health blogs in Canada. It will bring out the top 10. 
Those guys are already parking traffic in Canada. What will I do? I will copy their link, go to AHFs and naked them. Put it in AHF, it will naked them, sharp, sharp. And before you put it, make sure that you change the country in AHFs to Canada because you are targeting Canada. And that blog you're using is dominating Canada, Abby, is dominating Canada. So I'm going to change the country to Canada and then I will put the link and naked them. I will see all the keywords that I gave for. I will leave the big ones to them, let them go with that. I will focus on those small, small ones they are not even looking at. Focus on them and pursue them and pursue them. That is how I get traffic from Canada. Simple. Simple. Does that make sense? Samson, does it make sense? That is how to get traffic from Canada. Simple. Search, get what people are searching for in Canada. Get what, and I've taught you how to get it. Get the list of websites dominating your niche in Canada. Change the country in AHF to that, that Canada. Run it and naked those guys, or let the small ones go and target them. Traffic will come from Canada. There is no magic. Simple. Abi? So what else? Obama show is somewhere in the uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't have to call your name. Well, don't be angry. It is a practical class. It's a practical class. So, and everybody can see your chats. Right? Oh, it's a private chat. I don't have to call your name. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's not an issue now. Everybody here knows each other. We know that your name is known. So, we know that uh, Oga Kene is here. You know that Linda is there. We know that something. If you have been calling people's names, so don't be concerned about your name. Be your name now, dollar. Is your name dollar, sir? Calm down. If you call my name and give me money, call it. Oh, my name is Remedy. Call it one thousand times. Give me money, sir. Thank you very much. All right. Um, okay. Please, please. You have more. More questions. Fire it too. This is the time to fire. Ha. Oga kene. See me see trouble. See me see trouble, sir. Call my name and give me money. Oga kene said you should call his name and give him dollars. If you say by Mr. Kene Chukwago, send him one thousand dollars. Call it again. You can call it again. You're free. All right. So what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Any further questions? Any further questions? All right, in the absence of further questions, I want to believe that you've been able to assimilate and digest all I have uh, thought. Someone said yes. I don't know if the yes means um, you, you don't have questions, you got it, or that you have questions. Okay, Google Console, all right. Well, we are going to discuss that tomorrow. I'm going to be showing you practicals. I don't want to discuss that in theory. No, no, no. It's not my style. I do practical. So we're going to be doing Google Console and Google Analytics tomorrow. All right. Next tomorrow. Today is day seven. Is it day seven or day eight? Is that day seven or day eight of our class? So. We have Google Console and Google Analytics. The six, of course, plus the day of assignment. That is the seven, sir. All right. I am actually doing this thing like this simply because I want to cover everything in details. If I'm having a one-on-one -on -one class with you and it's for 10 days, what we do is we do the one, I will give you assignment, you go and do the following day. So classes will be five days, assignment will be five days. That is how to run a class. A class is not something you run every single day. And when do you get time to practice it? But I am doing this because you people don't have blogs. Those who are doing private, private stuff with, they have blogs. So I teach you something, you go and practice it. So I am seizing the opportunity that you don't have blog. I am seizing the opportunity that you don't have blog yet to deliver everything and make sure that everything is in details. Like I detail everything and break it down as much as I can. So don't say, don't even, don't even go there. Or don't see it as if, uh, this is our, the, the seventh day of our class. Tomorrow will be day eight. 
All right. So tomorrow we'll be looking at Google Console and um, um, Google Analytics. And we'll also look at um, content writing. Content writing. How can you write content? Remember, we've talked about generating content ideas. So, so that's not what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to just roughly show you how you can write content. Okay. Okay. Yes, of course. I will have. I'll provide a video. Okay. A grouping on Ahrefs. All right. What I wanted to do is to personally select you people and put you in groups. But I've seen that there's no point in that because I don't know who is ready and I don't know who is not ready. So this is what you will do. Azad SEO. I've dropped the link. I'll drop it before. I'll drop it again. I dropped it before. I'll drop it again. Azad. Azad, A Z A A Z A D S E O dot com. Azad S E O dot com. Go there. You can decide to have an account for yourself. It is ten dollars per month. There are there are other plans. So there are, I think, there's one for thirteen dollars. There's one for seven dollars, and there's one for ten dollars. So you can decide to have one for yourself. You can decide to, some of you in this class are friends already. Isn't that true? Some of you here are already friends. Remember, please, remember that this Azad SEO has a limitation of 25 searches per day. What did I say? 25 searches. 25 keyword searches. A day, day limit. So it has 25 keyword searches per day limit. Okay, that is if you pay Azad $10 for a month and you're using Ahrefs, you can only do 25 searches per day. Do you understand? So I advise that if you want to get Ahrefs, please don't be more than four. In fact, I will even recommend three people, three people per account, three people by account. Ten dollars is how much? Ten dollars around four thousand five hundred. That be four thousand five hundred divided by three people will be one five. I think that is enough. One thousand five hundred naira. One thousand five hundred naira times three people will be four thousand five hundred. You can contribute one thousand six hundred to cover up for charges when you want to pay. With, I don't know whose card you're going to use and pay, but any of you can bring out your card and use it and pay online, okay? If you have issues with the payment, you can always let me know. But first of all, you create an account. The three of you will come together and agree and create an account, and three of you will have access to the account, okay? And when you're using the, the team for research, always remember that there are other people that are going to use it. So don't finish the 25 a uh, search limit that you have per day. So 1,600 times three people. So you can go and pair with anybody you like. I'm not paying anybody. Let it not, uh, let it not cause any confusion. Anybody that is, in, that is your friend in this group, go and pair. If you don't have friends before, go and make a friend. Make friends. Connect with somebody. The essence of this group is to connect. You must connect. I've said it before. Whatever you do, tell your neighbor what you do. We can patronize you. Okay? So that at the end of this class, we will not just have valuable knowledge. We also have valuable contact. Because as you continue to grow, you will continue to exchange ideas. You exchange ideas. All right? If there's something I don't know, I can ask you. If there's something you don't know, you can ask me. If there's anything we don't understand, we can ask Kene. We can ask Samson, we can ask Linda, we can ask just about anybody. All right, so we must network, we must connect. Okay, somebody has even done the math. If it is 25 searches, so it means that one person has eight searches to do per day. That is great. 
is great. I think that is enough for you to get started. What are you even searching? One search is enough to bring out everything you're searching for in a day. How many, how many times do you search? Unless, unless you're writing 20 contents per day. In a day, in a day, in a day. So that is that. Any more questions? So go and uh, group yourselves and get AHREPS. My Oga, praise, okay. I am very loyal and local to your government. My another Oga, Kenechuku, Agu. I am very, very loyal and local to your, to your government. Thank you all, um, thank you everybody for joining tonight. I will upload this video and send you the link in the group so that you can watch it. Have a great night ahead. We'll be meeting by 8 p.m. tomorrow. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Somebody just sent a link in our group. Linda, you are a darling. I've told you earlier that you're a darling. Linda for president. Too. Linda for president. Linda has dropped a link. You people can register. There's a free course on how you can write um, content. All right. I am going to take this course myself oh, because I like knowledge. I like to learn something new. I like things that will provoke my thoughts. I like things that will challenge what I already know. So I, I keep on learning. I don't stop. Even, even after making money, I still don't stop. Because if you stop learning, you are old. Even if it happens at the age of 20, you are still old, very, very old. So we'll keep learning. Go and click on that link, register. Take that course and please, before you take it, say thank you, Linda. Thank you, Linda, our president. We we'll vote you in 2023. Linda, you must be president. It's not 2021, no, 2023. <laughs> 2023. God bless you, Linda. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Enjoy your night. Good night. Oh, I'm seeing messages. I'm seeing messages. Some people are sending messages. Okay, I will share. Of course, I will share. I will share the link to. Uh, yes, another link I cage in the making. All right, all right, all right. No new question. No new question. All right. Okay, good night, guys.